Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We're here today as a result of what transpired at the Royal Palm Hotel on Miami Beach last week. I do believe that body-worn cameras are an important part of policing, and as you know, I advocated from the very beginning, along with the former chief of Miami Beach Police Department, for their countywide usage. As you will see, they played a critical role in this case. As has already been reported by a number of media outlets, I really believe that these body-worn cameras are an important part of this case. In the early morning hours of July 26, 24-year-old Alonta Kreta allegedly had an interaction with a Miami Beach bicycle police officer, which left the bicycle officer with leg injuries requiring hospitalization and crutches. Mr. Kreta allegedly fled the scene on a scooter, rushing to the Royal Palm Hotel where he was staying. Police Lieutenant Jose Reina followed him into the hotel, catching up to Mr. Crudup at the hotel elevator and holds him at gunpoint. This will be clearly shown in the video we will be playing for you in just a few moments. Mr. Crudup exits the elevator with his hands raised and drops down to the ground with his arms outstretched in front of him. He then places his hands behind his back as Lieutenant Rainey kneels to apparently begin placing Mr. Crudup in handcuffs, other Miami Beach police officers arrive on the scene. Now, some of the body camera footage captures the clink that you're not going to hear or disretain uh, of the handcuffs being secured around Mr. Crudup's wrists. Ultimately, approximately 21 other Miami Beach officers arrive on the scene to assist in various degrees the apprehension of Mr. Crudup. It is at this point the situation begins to change, in our opinion, from a legitimate arrest of a criminal suspect into an ongoing investigation of the use of force by five Miami Beach police officers leading to their being criminally charged today. By the way, this is why duty to intervene in training which I and this police chief and others, as part of our continuing justice reform commission, felt it was necessary part of police reform legislation that ultimately was passed by the legislature this last legislative session. That new law, however, keep in mind, went into effect on July 1st. So today with me are members of my public corruption unit who are working the ongoing investigation and who will be prosecuting these criminal cases and others that may develop out of this investigation. I'd like to start with my Deputy Chief, Tim Vandergeesen, who over here is also the Chief of our Public Corruption Unit. We also have Robin, there he is, Robin Picaro over here. In addition to him being a Division Chief, he's also a, a, a part of our Police Accountability and Integrity Team. Hey. I want to thank both of you gentlemen very much for all your work throughout the weekend. There's Johnny Carter, who is also here from that unit. She worked tirelessly on this as well. I also want to give credit to the Miami Beach Police Chief, Richard Clements, who quickly moved to bring my prosecutors in to help review the circumstances of this arrest and the arrest of Kaylin Vaughn and the subsequent actions that occurred. I want to point this out because it was his command staff that immediately alerted the Chief's Office of Internal Affairs and the Chief took swift action and immediately referred what had occurred to us as well as suggesting that the case against Mr. Vaughn be dropped. We agreed and we did so immediately. Each one of us standing here today recognizes that police officers face a variety of dangers on the job each and every day. On this issue, there is no doubt, no confusion, and certainly no disagreement. However, as I previously said, excessive force can never, ever, ever be an acceptable foundation for the policing of any community. Officers who forget the fact and forget that fact do a grave disservice to the people they have sworn to serve. 
They harm their own departments, and they belittle the good work and hard work that each of their fellow officers tries to accomplish in the community. So at this point, let us begin to review this video, which has been put together uh, from police body camera material, as well as from video that was in the lobby of the Royal Palm Hotel. So you, you see these screens playing in front of you. Um, so at this point, we're gonna, what we're gonna try to do is we try to segment it into two different victims, okay? So we're going to start with the first focus of actions involving taking Mr. Crudup into custody. You'll see, and then we're going to focus on the interaction with Caleb Vaughn after this. So at this point, George, if you can play a video, please. You'll see Mr. Crudup getting into the elevator. You'll see Lieutenant Jose Reyna, who follows Mr. Crudup to the hotel catching up to him at the hotel elevator. He holds him at gunpoint. Mr. Crudup uh, has his hands raised and he drops to the ground. And now his arms are outstretched in front of him. He then places his hands behind his back as Lieutenant Randy kneels to apparently begin placing Mr. Crudup in handcuffs. Other Miami Beach police officers arrive on the scene. And if you can stop just there. Uh, if you could roll back just a little bit, George. I'm sorry. I'm trying to catch it. Very good. You should see things very slowly, so we're trying to. Okay, you'll see there Officer Kevin Perez kicking Mr. Crudup. We believe, as I said earlier, we just didn't catch it for you, that the handcuffs were already placed on. You can hear it on another uh, body worn camera. Then you'll see um, the video appears to show uh, Sergeant Jose Perez. We're still with Kevin Perez. Go on to the next one, please. You see the slow motion replay here? Stop it right there, Jordan. Can you see this? <laughs> it took me several times. Right? Can you see that action right there? Is that usable to all of you? Yes? Okay. <laughs> Now what you'll see is about 15 seconds later, uh, he is on the ground handcuffed. He's not really moving, but he is being held down. You saw the, the subsequent kick again by Sergeant Perez. And then we'll keep moving the bag. You see a head slam. You can catch that there. See that right there? So Sergeant Perez had, uh, who again, who kicked him, had then You'll see him come back around in just a second. You'll see him down on the ground there. That's after the body is slammed. And you'll see them all sort of disperse. Um, and then about eight seconds later, while he's still on the ground, and while we're moving again, it appears Sergeant Perez comes back. You'll see this right here, lunch there. Did you see that kick here? There it is. So much more. So that's three times by Sergeant Officer Perez. So for these actions, Miami Beach Police Sergeant Jose Perez is being charged today. We then have Miami Beach Officer Kevin Perez, who's also, by the way, there's no relationship, as I understand it, between the two Perez's, just now they both have some of the same last name. This, uh, this video appears to show Kevin Perez uh, <coughs> kicking Mr. Crud up at least four times. Let's see. You'll see the back there. That's officer. That's a 
Then about five seconds later, they say it's awful to pick him up and again. I think we've done this already. Okay. So now, does that conclude this part of the video? Okay. So now we're going to move on to the scenario involving victim Caleb Vaughn. I don't know if you saw it earlier, I failed to point it out to you. Um, but you'll see that, according to the video, Mr. Caleb Vaughn seems to be a bystander in the hotel lobby, and he appears to be standing approximately uh, 12 to 15 feet away from the apprehension of Mr. Prada. And Mr. Vaughn appears to begin filming the scene with his, looks like his cell phone, at which point Officer Robert Sabater arrives on the scene approximately 30 seconds after Mr. Vaughn first began filming without incident. You see, go back to that again, please. George, throw that back in. So you see, we think that officers here stand back up, and you'll see him take about four steps back with his camera. Now you see Officer Sabater. Uh, running in and tackling him there. <coughs> now, if you hold it right there. Now what you see is, after he's tackled, this is actually, this, these are his shorts. And that's a fifth right here. And watch, watch what happens next. I'm sorry, it's, but it's all we have. It's what it is. So if you could play that, George, please. Now what you see there is a series of punches in the back rib, air, the rib cage area or kidney area that's on the back. You see that there? So, because of those actions that you just saw, Miami Beach Police Officer Robert Sabater is being charged today. Now we have the body-worn camera video of Officer David Rivas, who appears to show Mr. Vaughn actively backing away from the Officer Rivas. Remember you saw that initially? Uh, off, off. But nonetheless, Officer Sabater uh, then pinned Mr. Vaughn against the column. Well, approximately 12 seconds later, while he's being handcuffed, you can see through the videos, and we just went through this, uh, Officer, roll that back again, that's Officer Rivas, thank you, who's repeatedly striking Mr. Vaughn, as I said, in the ribcage area, until he's ultimately brought to the ground. And so for this reason, for these actions, Miami Beach Police Officer David Rivas is being charged today. We then have the body-worn camera video of Officer Steven Serrano, uh, where it appears to show that Mr. Vaughn is being cornered by several officers. And it appears to show that he's being Mr. Officer Serrano repeatedly striking Mr. Vaughn until he's ultimately brought to the ground. I think we just went through that as well. So let me just think, you can see that there, there are different videos of the same thing, so that's why it's Seems to cut it right there. Can you roll that back, George, please? For a second. We're doing this from another room, so that's why it seems to be done as well. Uh, well timed as we would like it to be. So let me just conclude by saying that uh, the investigation into this incident it is continuing. This was a week ago and uh, potentially other uh, additional charges may be filed. Um, but today, we know that the five officers, Sergeant Jose Perez, Officer Kevin Perez, Robert Sabater, and Officer David Rivas, and Officer Steven Serrano are all being charged with uh, battery. It's a first degree misdemeanor. Uh, as determined by the present available evidence that we have right now, 
um, you can see by some other requirements that if you have any other questions about why not other charges, we're available to answer those. But at this point, I don't think we need to do that. Um, but thank you, and I appreciate it. Um, so with that, I will uh, ask, well, I was going to ask the police chief, oh, okay. Peter, if that's okay. That's good, sure. Let him say a few words. Sure. And then we'll open it up for questions in English. And then after that, we'll open it up to Spanish and then questions, OK? Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm just turning it through. The moment that I learned about this incident and watched the video, it was disheartened to see the way that um, our officers responded representing our badge. Um, but I want to emphasize to you, this is by no means at all a reflection of the dedicated men and women of the Miami Beach Police Department. Moving forward, I can tell you that my staff and I promise you, as individuals, and as an agency, we will learn from this, and we will grow from this, and we will do better. This is not what you see officers. And we're going to make sure that we do all that we can to ensure that it doesn't happen. Thank you, Chief. And we know that's the case. Thank you. Okay, so questions. Yeah, Jackie, what alarms you the most about this, what we're looking at in this video? Um, it, I think it's, it's a lot to do with what, what the Chief said. We know that there's so many hard-working, good, honorable, men and women in uniform that serve tirelessly to protect us. And then you have, you know, a handful of those that just violate them. They go beyond the powers. They go beyond anything that any of us expect, including their colleagues and the, and the good men and women that serve as police officers in this community. So yes, when we see this, it's, it's alarming, it's disturbing. Uh, there's so many adjectives that we can use to describe it. Uh, I think one reason the chief and his department and I move so swiftly is because it's intolerable. Nobody wants this to happen, including the police departments themselves. 